guys, welcome again to ITS Information Technology Skills. On today's video, we're going to talk about the introduction of a software requirement specification. So let's start. So what is a software requirement specification or SRS? It is a complete description of software, program, or sets of applications that perform particular functions in a specific environment. So pag sinabi natin, SRS or Software Requirement Specification, it describes the system or the software na ide-develop mo. So, it also contains the applications or the activities that you are going to do in developing a software. SRS is also called as Requirement Document. If you say SRS or Software Requirement Specification, it will be developed by both the client and the developer. The content of SRS are the system's purpose. Ano nga ba yung purpose ng system na i-develop? It also has the functionality, then the interface of the system. So what are the reasons for using SRS? First, it describes how a software should be developed, then creates the basis of all documentations. It helps to understand the product or the system. It helps to cover risk on each development stage. So, kung minsan, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga changes on our system or dun sa mga system na dinidevelop natin, the SRS must be flexible. Okay? So, dapat pwede din siyang na-edit or i-revise if there are changes on the system. So, here are the types of SRS. First, we have the functional requirement and the non-functional requirement. So, what are the difference between the two? For the functional requirement, it describes the functionality of the system. The non-functional requirement defines the system properties and constraints. Functional requirements also specifies what should the software system do. While the non-functional requirement, it answers the questions, how should the software system fulfill the functional requirement? Okay, so the functional requirement is identified by the user. While the non-functional requirement, it is created or identified by the system developer. To better understand that, let's have an example for both requirements. So, an example of functional requirements is a verification email is sent to the user whenever he or she registers for the first time on some software system. Okay, so that is an example of functional requirement. Okay, so bakit functional requirement siya? Kasi, you're going to identify kung ano yung gagawin ng system kapag merong nag-register na bagong user. While for the non-functional requirement, example niya guys is storage requirement. Let's say, ilan ba yung size na kailangan ng system na i-develop? The response time, gano kabilis yung pag-response ng system kapag merong input, okay? So, here are the structures of SRS. The first one is the introduction. Next is the overall description. Then, the specific requirements. We also have the validation checking and validation techniques. So, ano nga ba yung madidiscuss or ano nga ba yung ilalagay mo under introduction? It has the purpose. Why are you developing the software? So, ano yung purpose? Bakit mo ginagawa yung software that will be included on the introduction? Next is the document convention. It indicates kung ano yung font nung ilalagay mo dun sa document, kung ano yung font size, font style, kung paano mo i-document yung software. Next is the intended audience and reading suggestions. Who can read or get the benefits from this SRS? Okay, so ang mga ilalagay mo dun are who are the developers, the users, the marketing staff, the testers, and other members na makaka-benefit dun sa SRS. Next is the scope. What are the objectives and the benefits of the product being developed? Dito ilalagay mo yung mga objectives, limitations, scopes, and the benefit ng dinidevelop na system. Next is the reference. Meron ka bang pinagbibisan? Meron ka bang other system na pinakapi or pinafaldo? Next, we have the overall description. Under the overall description, we have the product perspective and features. 
the main function and features of the system. So, under this product perspective and features, dito mo ilalagay yung mga functionalities and the other features of the system that you are going to develop. We also have the user classes and the characteristics. Sino yung mga gagamit ng system, ano yung mga characteristics nila para alam ng developer and the user kung paano magpe-feedback later on. We also have the operating environment. The product can be used in what kind of environment. Next is the design and implementation constraints. What constraints, rules, and regulations should be followed in developing the product? So, ang example ng mga to guys are the hardware limitations, the memory requirements, and the language requirements. Ano yung mga kailangan mong hardware? Ano yung size ng memory para mag yung program or para ma-develop yung program? Ano yung language na gagamitin to develop the program? We also have the user documentation. List of user documentation components that will be provided to the client of the product. An example of these guys are the online help, the user manual, and the tutorials. These are the documentations para maintindihan ng client yung system. Then next is the assumptions and dependencies. So under specific requirements, you're going to identify the functional requirement. So dito, ina-analyze na natin the functionalities from the user's perspective. Okay? Then we also have the external interface requirements. Describes the element visible to the client. The external interface requirements are the requirements na nakikita ni client. Ito yung mga user interface, the hardware interface, the software interface, and the communication interface. So basically, the internal interface will be visible to the client and pwede silang makapagsuggest kung ano yung mga magandang ilalagay nila just like for the user interface, what are the color na ilalagay, kung ano yung font, the hardware interface, the software interface, and the communication interface, how to communicate with the other members of the systems. Next, we have the validation check and techniques. Under the validation check, you're going to analyze if there are completeness of the system. Okay, so titignan mo kapag yung system complete, na-achieve niya ba yung requirements and needs of the client. We have the consistency check. We have the validity check. Tama ba yung mga output na dinadisplay ng system? We have the realism check, ambiguity check. And lastly, verifiability. So, to do this check, guys, we're going to use different techniques, which includes the test case generation, prototyping, and requirement reviews. These different techniques will be discussed on a separate video. So, that's it, guys. We're done with the introduction of software requirements specification. Kung nakatulong tong video na to, don't forget to like. And kung gusto mo pang matuto about computer programming and other computer stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more tutorial videos. Bye!